I really enjoy flour tortillas, and a homemade flour tortilla is my preference. And I finally found a recipe that I like, uh, but I'm not going to call it the best flour tortilla recipe because I don't think that exists. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of recipes for tortillas, and really it just comes down to personal preference, how you want the tortilla to be. So this is the recipe that I have chosen because it gives me the tortilla that I like. And so I thought I'd share it with you here today. So let's get into it. Let's make some flour tortillas. So my favorite thing about making flour tortillas is just how simple they are. There's very few ingredients. Uh, and even though there are very few ingredients, I don't have the recipe committed to memory yet. So I have it written down on a little card here. And you probably can't really read my chicken scratch there. Uh, so don't worry, I will list out the ingredients on the screen, and I'll also type it out in the description of the video down below. This is a recipe from a celebrity chef uh, named Rick Bayless. So I have made some slight adjustments to this recipe, both in how I put the recipe together and what I put in the recipe. I need some all-purpose flour. I need some salt. I need some oil or fat, and I need a little bit of water. So I'm gonna start with the water first, and that is three quarters of a cup of water. And then what I like to do, and this is totally optional, is I like to add my salt into the water itself. Now this is some Himalayan pink salt, and I noticed that it doesn't dissolve quite so quickly and easily, but that's okay. Um, I just give it a little stir with my little spatula here and just try to get that dissolved in the water. Now you don't have to do this, you can add your salt into the flour if you want, but this is just something that I have been doing for years with baking, and so I just kind of have carried it over with cooking tortillas here. What I'm gonna do here next might be a little bit controversial, but I'm gonna use a scale to measure out my flour. I worked in a restaurant for many, many, many years, and I am just used to making uh, food on a kind of high production scale, and I got used to using a scale because of my work. And I find it to be faster, although if you're not used to high production type cooking and baking, you might not think that this is a faster method. But use whatever method you want. This is just the way I, I do it. And by the way, I bought this scale at Ikea. Uh, if you have eyed the Ikea scale, I can tell you skip it. It's not very good, but I have it, so I'm using it. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got my big bag of flour, and I actually keep my scoop right in my bag of flour. So I'm just going to add in my flour, and this is going to be about uh, 340 grams of flour, uh, or two and three-quarter cups of flour. And I'm just using all-purpose flour here. You can use whatever you'd like. I am doing this by grams because if I want to double the recipe uh, or cut the recipe in half, it just makes doing the math a little bit easier. At least I think for me. I'm not so great at math. But doubling up gram measurements is, is quite a bit easier. 340 grams, I can do that math in my head. Although I'm not going to do it now. But I can. I can do it in my head. Right? I, really, I really can. We can turn our attention to the olive oil now. And we're going to need about a third of a cup of olive oil. And you can use whatever type of oil or fat that you prefer. And Chef Bayless prefers to use lard in uh, his recipe. Uh, I just have switched over to olive oil. I've used quite a few different kinds of oil, but I just have switched over to olive oil just because I just like it the best. And I'm not going to use a cup measurement. I'm just going to use uh, my scale to measure out my oil. And I'm just going to pour that right in there. Um, going for a third of a cup or about 70 grams of olive oil. Uh, if you're using some other type of oil, it might be a slightly different weight. But with olive oil, it's going to be about 70 grams. Now at this point we can get rid of our scale. We're all done with that, so I'll set that aside. And then I'm going to go back to my little spatula here, and I'm just going to cut in the oil into the flour. Once I get the oil kind of cut in here, then I will now go in with my fingers and just cut in 
this fat. Uh, remember that oil and fat are pretty much the same thing, interchangeable. At least in the restaurant industry, that's an interchangeable term. So uh, use whatever oil or whatever fat you want, but uh, we're just going to cut this in here. And whatever you choose, oil or fat-wise, it's going to look the same uh, as you work it here. So you're just going to work this till you get kind of a sandy texture. And... I find this easier to do with my fingers once I kind of get the initial oil in, uh, worked in with the spatula. Okay, so that's kind of the texture we're looking for. The oil is all cut into the flour and we have kind of a sandy texture. And um, if you spend just a minute doing this, you'll have a better uh, result later on. Now at this point, we're gonna go in with our salted water. I'm just gonna make a little well in the center here and pour my salted water in. And then I'm just gonna work this again with my spatula, again with the idea of trying to keep this uh, process as clean and as simple as I can. And just like with the oil before, I find it helpful to start with a spatula and then once I get it to a point, I'll just go in with my hand and start to knead this up a little bit right here in the bowl. And the idea right now is just to get everything combined, get all that loose flour and loose fat all combined as one little homogenous dough. And once I get to a point here, I've found it's a little easier just to dump this out onto my countertop. And I'm just going to give this a real quick knead. I'm not really after uh, getting this all perfectly smooth. Uh, you can if you want, and it seems like some of the recipes I've tried before this one, they suggested that you need for, you know, anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour. I think one lady was saying her recipe, you should need it for 45 minutes or something, and uh, I just haven't found that to be necessary, at least not with this recipe. It's funny, uh, Chef Bayless, whose recipe this is, he does this whole process in a food processor. And I don't happen to have a food processor, so uh, doing this by hand, I think is pretty easy. And that is pretty much all I have found I need to do. Our next step here is we're going to kind of roll this out into a log and then cut this dough down. And after making some little balls of dough that will be the final size of tortilla. And because I have a small uh, pan to use uh, to cook these in, I have to have fairly small little balls of dough. Uh, now, if you've got a big pan or a big uh, griddle or something, you could go with a bigger ball of dough, but I, I just don't have that, so I've got to go with these little ones. Just roll this in your hands, or you can do like the professionals do. Just roll it on the counter, and most professionals do two at a time. I, I just can't do that. And then once we have these all rolled out, I'm just going to put them back in my bowl here that I use to mix everything up. And I'm going to cover them up, and I prefer not to use plastic wrap. So I'm just going to cover them up with my plate that kind of fits pretty much perfectly over this bowl here. So I'm just going to set this aside. This is just going to sit and we want them to sit for about half an hour. There's a little bit of gluten in the flour that we kind of activate when we're kneading it and so we just want to get that gluten to relax out. It'll make rolling them out quite a bit easier. So I'll finish these off, wait about half an hour and then we will reconvene to the next step. Okay, so it's been about half an hour of time, and what we need to do is roll these tortillas out, and we also need to get our pan on our heat and warmed up. So I'm gonna get my stove set at about medium heat, and probably medium high would be a better choice of temperature setting for most stoves. This stove is a 15,000 BTU stove, and so I find medium kind of works a little bit better for me. Now we're just gonna 
take these one by one and roll these out. I like to kind of just shape them out into a little coin shape to get started and then I start rolling. And there is a technique to rolling these uh, and I don't use that because that does involve dusting flour out on your work surface and I don't like to do that because it makes a big mess here in my van. Uh, I just skip the flour part and it makes rolling these out slightly more difficult at least slightly slightly more difficult to get them completely round. But I, I don't really care about that. It doesn't bother me at all. And how I like my tortillas are pretty thin, and this is just kind of personal preference here, but uh, if you want your tortillas to be a little more toothsome, you can uh, roll them out a little bit thicker. But I like to roll mine out a little bit on the thin side, just because that's the texture that I like. I can't really make a big tortilla uh, because this is the only cooking pan that I have. But I'm just going to lay that in there and while that one is starting to cook, I'm just going to start working on the next little tortilla. Roll it out while one is cooking and kind of just get in a little production mode here. So I'm looking for just a little bit of color on them, and this one's looking pretty good. I've noticed one thing about using uh, olive oil instead of lard, uh, and I never use shortening, but um, the one difference is with olive oil or vegetable oil, uh, if, you do, if you do happen to overcook the tortilla, they, uh, they do tend to get a little bit uh, crispy and that's obviously not desirable. So you kind of have to watch your heat. Make sure that the heat is not too high and have them burn. And you don't want to get the heat too low either because they tend to just dry out a little bit as they cook in the pan. I like to just stack these up as I cook them. So I just stack them up on the plate that I used here and then I cover them up with a towel. And I find that that kind of helps finish their cooking process off. They kind of steam as they are stacked up together. Okay, this is the last tortilla. I've worked my way through them. And this batch turned out really well. Uh, but that is why I like this recipe. Uh, it seems to be a really forgiving recipe. And the funny thing is when I first wrote down the ingredients for this. I got it off of a YouTube video and I was just jotting the ingredients down as the chef was speaking them out. I thought I forgot the baking powder because I've always associated baking powder with uh, flour tortilla recipes, but this one doesn't have it. Um, and these are still really light and fluffy and airy and all without the baking powder. So. I like this recipe just for the simplicity of it and just the ease of use of it and the fact that it's just a simple recipe with less ingredients is a better uh, recipe in my opinion. So last time I was talking about making tortillas I had a bunch of questions about a tortilla press and I'm not saying that this is right or wrong but with our family we never used a tortilla press for flour tortillas. Uh, we did use tortilla presses for corn tortillas but never for flour. Uh, we always used some type of rolling pin. Uh, I have a full-size rolling pin, French rolling pin. I found that it was a little bit too big for my space and so I noticed this one at the dollar store and I figured this smaller size kind of works for my space a little bit better, especially because I'm making smaller tortillas. Uh, I don't need a big, huge rolling pin. So I switched to this and for a buck I think it was a good decision. Um, a lot of people told me I can use a bottle but all of my bottles are covered in stickers and I don't find this appealing to uh, roll out tortillas with this bottle covered with stickers. And the last point I want to make about tortillas is just make some. They're really easy and they taste so much better. The texture is so much better than anything you're going to buy in a grocery store. that. Even though it takes a little bit of time, uh, there's not a whole lot of effort really in making tortillas and so I think it's well worth the time and the effort that you put into them. They're just a real treat.
So that's my two cents about making tortillas. I'm going to enjoy some of these now. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.